this debate for us. So what Michelle and I want as an ultimate goal for this is we want ultimately that our laws and our countries will be upheld, right? And we see the only way we can do this is by having total but still controlled anarchy. And with controlled anarchy, we mean obviously the purge 24 hours of this. So the motion before us is how to implement the purge. Um, the purge meaning total anarchy for 24 hours, only for that 24 hours, you'll be allowed to kill and rape and murder and steal and do whatever you want as you please without being, uh, without, without living with the common legal consequences of that, right? Yeah. So what I as a um, country government and uh, prime, prime minister going to bring to you, I'm going to look at all the benefits of having no law and how this will, how we will then see value of the binary opposition and why people will have incentive into buying into this, right? So the first argument I'm going to look at is, is this idea of our benefit, the benefit of having no law and how this will affect the value of the binary opposition, right? So currently what we see is the fact, this fact that people are not upholding the law, right? We, we see that um, people are being murdered and, and the law is not, the, there's not that much of value to the law, right? Not now. Um, we see that, yes, people have different kinds of motives for crime, right? For, for, for committing crime, different types of, types of reasons for committing rape, for stealing, for murder. Um, be that that you're poor and you have no other other ulterior other uh, other other reason to do, or you um, be that you have some psychological defect and you're born without some certain lope in your brain and you kill people because that is just um, what like that is like just your psyche, right? Or be that that like the social constructs within what which you grew up, right? That you grew up with the fact oh, that you're not that bad. To um, not now, not that bad to kill somebody, not that bad to steal, right? Or that maybe you can meet ultimate ultimate survival is that you need to be the fittest no matter what the consequences, right? So what we're saying on this day specifically, we're going to go, we're going to say we don't care about your motives, right? We don't care um, about why you want to commit crime. In fact, we don't care about like the social constructs which you grew up with. We don't care if your parents or your religion or taught you that this is wrong. Yes, please. Who's going to use this day to the benefit? Who's going to use this to their benefit? Right, so we see as a government this is going to be wonderful because we're going to implement this for the benefit of the whole throughout the other 355 days, right? We're going to see in my third argument, I'm going to talk about the incentives um, and why people would use this for their benefit, right? So I'm going to go on, right? And we're going to say that this, we're going to unravel social construct um, inherently for that day. We're going to go, so we really don't care what you grew up with, and we really don't care what you believe, right? But for this day, um, you can kill and murder um, totally, and it's going to be um, okay for the law, right? So this is specifically, and this is the important part which opposition um, needs to listen to, is the value of binary opposition. So, what the value of binary opposition is out, right? That the good is only as good as the good is um, in, uh, um, in, uh, in relation to the bad. And the bad is only bad in relation to the good. So currently, as I said, laws are being broken, right? So the good is not as good anymore, and the bad is not as bad anymore, right? So we see that toddlers are being raped. Something that would be inexcusable um, and totally bad is something that people are just getting more used to. Um, more information. More getting used to. We see mass genocide in Syria. We see when someone like Bashar al-Assad has no respect for the law because he goes, I'm going to kill the people in my own country, and I'm going to use um, chemical weapons to kill them. It shows us he has no respect for the law, and it ultimately doesn't see what the bad, but the bad is really that bad. We see billions of dollars being stolen, and we see um, people being murdered in the world class. So, um, so we see that ultimately the bad is not as bad as we want the bad to be. Um, so currently, what the, then is happening is we're having a the balance we have is we're fighting to maintain the law um, for the pure fact that it's not being maintained. People don't see the bad as bad as it could be, and people don't necessarily see the good in, in comparison to how bad um, the bad is, right? So there's not much value to law currently, because people can get away with murder, or people are not directly affected by murder. So um, we have a lot of those are people that don't really care for the meaning of the law, because maybe there's ne someone never broke into my home, or somebody never murdered a relative of me, or I've never been raped, so I never directly experienced um, crime, so I don't see the yeah, meaning yeah. or the bad thing about law. So what we're now saying, right, is ultimately we're implementing the purge, yes. So if you've never experienced a crime, does that mean it's not bad? So what I'm saying is, ultimately if you um, haven't experienced a crime, it means that you don't necessarily 
um, value law that much because you haven't been directly influenced yeah, yeah. Um, oh, by, by, by crime. So when I stand in South Africa and I see Bashar al-Assad in Syria killing people, I don't think it's that bad because it's not direct, directly influencing me because I haven't have received any direct influence of crime, right? So the problem, what, what, what this is going to achieve is we're going to have to, like two types of people. That, I think we're going to have people that goes like, I actively break the law during the rest of the year and I don't see why it's bad. I don't see why it's bad if I get murdered. Oh, I murder someone, why it's bad if I rape someone. So what they're going to experience is a total day of anarchy where there's going to be no laws, where their lives are going to be endangered, right? Yeah. So they're going to be exposed to some sort of badness and Boys. some sort of horrible. And also, no, the other, the other, the other element is this, this, the fact that people that don't get affected by crime, people become apathetical to it because I don't get affected by crime. So it's not that bad if people get murdered, people get raped, because it's not affecting me. Now there's going to be a day where it's going to affect them, right? And affect them. And they're going to have a stark realization um, of the I'm importance of law. No, um, because this is a dire situation. Because what's going to happen is we're going to have a situation where all people are going to be influenced. And where all people are going to either have to fight for their lives or kill someone for the fact that, um, that their lives are going to be endangered. So ultimately, in this day of total anarchy, people will realize, while well, okay, the law is kind of important because without law, my life is in danger. Even though, uh, even though I, I never really directly, it never really directly affects me throughout the rest of the year, this day it affected me, so I can kind of realize the importance of law. So my final argument is why we need the incentive for the people to do this, right? And why we need this? We need enough people to buy for, into this to be affected. So we see that there are, there are going to be a, a, a group of people that's going to totally want to do this because I can find two people and nobody's going to, nobody's, nobody's, nobody's going to want, um, worry. But the rest of the people are going to realize that they're going to need to fight for the survival. They're going to have an incentive. Um, it's, it's going to be the incentive. So either I get killed or I kill people. So they're going to buy into this. So they're going to experience the total chaos of this. So in the moment we um, get all people to buy into this, there is going to be total, total chaos. So it is going to be effective because all people buy, all people buy into this, right? So, um, because the good people are totally going to be pushed to do bad things because it's their instinct, it's their fight for survival. So, what ultimately I'm going to do today is I told you that. Can we now call on the leader of opposition? We as opposition believe that Rome was not built in one day. Certainly. But if you, if you acknowledge the purge, Rome can certainly be destroyed in one night. Because what the purge essentially is, is doing whatever, by the words of the Prime Minister, whatever you want. But can we ask ourselves as a society, where can the line be drawn? Interesting enough, there are more people alive today than they have ever lived before in the world. This may seem as one of the advantages to, 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 to uh, what the parliament, uh, opening government is suggesting to say that the purge will reduce population, therefore defeating this whole problem that we may face. But in China, it has been proven that one in every ten person is intelligent. So now, taking that rationale, times it or multiplying it by more people, won't we then find solutions to overcrowdedness? If one nation can put one uh, can put can have a belief or an ideological uh, ambition to put a man on the moon, then can't we all as a universe, as a universe, or as a, not a universe, but as a as a as a, as a planet, as a, as a as an earth, come together and say, can't we find other means to live in uh, the, 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 the type of construed uh, environment that we live in? Secondly, he mentioned an interesting point to say that we have generally bad people that act on instinct. Now, instinct is something that could be, what, subconscious. Now, the purge could trigger the subconscious value of this instinct of what, I want to be a psychopath. Uh, no, no. I want to be a psychopath. Uh, emotions uh, triggering psychopaths, where do they end? You're a psychopath today, tomorrow the purge is over. The symptoms of being a psychopath have not gone away. Just because they've been triggered, now we have now the society that's living in normal, uh, conducive uh, laws that are being maintained, now has to deal with the, the psychopath that was created by the point. purge. Yes. Don't you think rather than like the minority of subconscious people realizing I'm going to have like the psychological defect, the majority of people will go, wow, not even subconsciously, but just obviously, wow, this is really bad having no laws. Interesting. You see, the relation between minority and majority can be multiplied by this purge because as soon as the minority realizes that the majority is doing it on a continuous basis yearly, they also want to say, you know, I want to join this. And a society of anarchy, once you are deeply involved in it, it is addictive. 
You do not just walk out of it. You see, the reason we have institutions like democracy, religion, because false religion, is to contain such urges. The Bible's ultimate rule, and be against the Bible, be. But the Bible's ultimate rule is what? Love thy neighbor, or cheat thy neighbor like you cheat yourself. Now, killing someone once a year, would you kill yourself once a year? No, you wouldn't, because then you wouldn't be alive. Point, sir. Yes. Can't we build a justice system by giving an example of what anarchy looks like? Yes, he mentioned a nice keyword, justice. What is justice? What is justice founded on? Justice is founded on the principles of equality. Now, can you tell me, someone being killed by a 35-year-old who's seven, where's the equality in that? Yes, his purchase might have been fulfilled and justice in his eyes would have been fulfilled because now the purge has uh, con not condemned but has allowed him to do so. So for him, justice is fine. A clear distinction, when you mention justice, equality needs to be behind your mind. Is there any equality behind the purge? And I say no, because the vulnerable become vulnerable learn. Yes, I made a word, sorry. <laughs> Institutions of democracy will be threatened. And it's interesting because opening, uh, opening government said that the reason they think that uh, being a, uh, not being affected by, by any crime uh, and being upon the purge would be that people are not maintaining the law. So the two bads, or two, the two wrongs make a right. No, certainly they do not. Uh, sorry, okay. As, I, as we stated, where do we draw the line? Do we draw the line once 12 o'clock is hit? Or do we draw the line once Russia and America start to decide, hey, we will have a big future to decide when this purge takes place? Because everyone has an idea that the purge will take place, but wars have been started. Was it this even started on when a certain occasion will take place? And I'm going to leave, I'm going to, I'm going to leave, I'm going to leave the, 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 the possibility of the question open to be decided by people that uh, may have alternative motives. I'll draw a picture in your mind. Say perhaps America now wants to destroy the whole of Europe. The purge is a beautiful excuse for them to do it because now with advanced technological uh, equipment, they can all do it in 12 hours. Then, next year, there is, guess what, there is no Europe to oppose them. Then what? When there's no social anarchy throughout the whole year, then we'll call off the, 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 the purge. On the point, sir, yes. do you think that big countries like America or Europe or Russia act impulsively when they really think about decisions about, like, demolishing other countries? You see, when you talk about acting national, you talk about, you have to consider being on con a continuous basis. The purge can eliminate people that have consistent ideas and consistent motives and consistent policies. The purge opens up possibilities for governments being toppled and militias and rebellion organizations taking over and then using the purge for something that was directly not intended for the purge to be used for. So yes, I do believe, oh, what is your question? But yeah, but, uh, <laughs> I hope I answered it. <coughs> Then again, uh, uh, the parliamentary uh, members talked about uh, the benefits, and amongst others, he mentioned that one of the reasons for killing me being being poor, and one maybe you, you've been born with defects, and that's all well and well and many, but these problems have been with us since the beginning of time. One instant in the beginning of our oh, a so-called period of the year will not fix these uh, problems that we face. These problems need to be faced by institutions. Yes, they may have problems, because we're not going to say we're going to live in a utopian society where there will be no murders, no killings, no rapes. What we're saying, we're going to have minimum. But how do we get to minimum? We have to progressively realize. Now, how do we progressively realize? We have to walk away from the connotation that we need to kill, or we need to walk away from the connotation that killing is right. No, oh, thank you. Because what happens, once you start killing, be it for one day, you desensitize the youth. Oh, you desensitize the youth. The, that process, be it uh, just a, a beginning process, implements uh, a rotating wheel for disaster. Because that is like a snowball effect. The purge is first started. The youth become desensitized and they come up with a new concept to say, you know, the purge is it's too restrictive and it's too, it's too uh, uh, short in duration. We need to extend this. We need to, 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 to kill more people. We need to raise more people to satisfy more of our urges. Basically, the, uh, the, the purge is starting to sound something that you read out of a satanic Bible. Anyway, I was hoping to get a little. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yes, thank you. Today, 
we're willing to have anarchy, but a controlled form of anarchy because we deal with the repercussions of tomorrow. Because tomorrow we have no anarchy. Secondly, here, how are we going to get the buy in of all people? Like, because otherwise, if we don't have the buy in of the good people, we just have like a bunch of criminals bullying everyone on like a single day and getting to run completely free. And so, like, for those of you that watch Batman, you know, like that quote that he makes of like, these good people, when the chips are down, will kill one another, right? That's some quote that sounds super bad and evil. Like it's true because it appeals to our human instinct, our desperate desire above all else to survive. And so we're arguing that exactly that, in that case where every single person could potentially be the person that ends your life or irrevocably changes it because they're willing to torture you for the next 24 hours on mass and you no repercussions. We're arguing that this then becomes a fight where yes, even good people are willing to say that for this specific day, I'm going to not be the person that I've socially been constructed to be. So that they get a first-hand experience, not of let's empathize with it, but let's actually experience it. The vast difference between having to empathize and having to truly experience something. And we're arguing that that experience, when you are on the threshold of having to protect your very life, that survival instinct is going to kick in. And lastly, the argument here of how the purge is going to lead to a greater appreciation of who we are. We're arguing here that you are going to value what it means, not just to have a be better legal justice system, but what it means to be truly human. That when we have a 24 hour period in which we have to face the worst and ugliest parts of us, the fact that we're willing to give in to our baser instincts, it allows us, as Sean and I's team line proves to you, the value of binary opposition, to be able to realize that we can stoop so low, that we can be such animals and that tomorrow we need to know and we can know because we have truly experienced the lowest of lows what it means to not give in to our base instincts, to not be animals but, but for each of us to strive to embrace the humanity within us. We think it is for that reason that we're so proud to propose this. Question. We now call on the Deputy Leader of Opposition to grow the Bay case. Members of the House and Madam Speaker, tonight I'm going to ask you one question. How would any one of you feel that someone would intrude your personal space and then violate your wife, kill your son, and then maybe come to an end? while watching one of this, because all, all law is now legal, all illegal acts are now legal. First, um, my previous speaker spoke about uh, a couple of questions, but the first one is, how long? Well, the, the most important one was how long, which I will be elaborating on a little later, but first on rebuttal. Now, government said that they don't care how bad this is going to get, as long as it's in that one day. Now. So, no matter what happens in that one day, government says, we're fine with it. Anyone can be killed. Anyone with any name or has no social or whatever can be killed or do whatever upon. Now, we are asking questions like, um, what scars would this lead? And what is what's the person that would maybe do, would uh, um, in, involve himself in this, in this day? And then also what it would lead to in the uh, later on. But first, they also said what a point. That, no, I'm just kidding. They also said the uh, rebuttal as well. They said that this would create total chaos. Now we are now we have to choose today between total chaos or organized crime. Those are our choices today. Personally, I'd go for organized crime because I know that this would not personally rape my wife in front of my eyes. This would not personally kill my mother and have my... No, the point so. Uh, no, 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 not yet. Okay, but first, now I'm going on. I'm going to just categorize who the people would be that would take point. Well, well, the first one in my eyes would be a person that just does not have um, the best money in the world. Because this person is actively doing crimes today. He does not have a job. He does not have an income. And now he has to provide an income. Well, therefore, um, he has to no, not yet. 
he has to go out and rob people. Now this person would be taking part in this day because he now has that one day where he can kill and steal from anyone he wants to. And now for the rest of the day he doesn't have a job. So he's not going to just stop with that one day. He's still going to rob people. But now it's just going to be illegal. But now he's had given one day to do whatever he wants and stock up hey, the sir. Yes, I accept my first Wouldn't you say that like in that one day, he's not really going to steal, but people are going to steal from him and he's going to realize how bad it is to steal because he's going to like uh, be affected like first day. This, this is not his work. Now this person is poor for the rest of the year. He has nothing to steal, to be stolen. He goes out one night, steals everything he can, sells it for the rest of the year. Now he has money, he has an income. He's stolen what he can, and now he's selling it as well. So at, the, at that day, he will, make, he will have made sure that he has nothing to steal from him. He has just his life, and now he's going to take other people's life. This is what's going to happen. Rich people have great economic power in, in our economy. They, will, they have jobs, they have huge CEO positions. These people will be targeted because they have huge houses with very expensive stuff, and they've got money. I will accept it. How is that any different to the organized crime that you can currently face where on any given day you can be raped? So yes, from more thank you. Human. Now, this is different because now everyone is included, not just the people that can protect themselves. Not everybody, even the person that cannot protect themselves, that doesn't have the money. Now, he is stood outside and he has to decide am I going to destroy other people's lives or am I going to let them kill me and destroy my life? These are the choices that we are left with if this, stuff, this is implemented. Also, now, this is going to be left to the cream of the crop, the person that can kill, the person that's the strongest. Now, the person that's the strongest is not necessarily the smartest person, he's not necessarily the, the best person for our country. He's not necessarily the best person, because he can kill, yes, great, he can kill, he can live now. But that, does that mean he's going to provide a really beneficial contribution to our society? I do not think that, because now he has killed a person, he has that on his conscience. Either he's going to commit suicide later on in the year, because of what he's done on that one night. Or, he's going to go on and just do whatever he wants, because now he's got that power. He's the strongest man on earth. Now, I'm going on a, to a terrorist. Now, um, what government has also proposed is global war. They have not said this, because this is a bad term. But this is what they're proposing. They're proposing one day in the world where everyone can do whatever they want. So terrorists are going to attack on this one day. They only need 24 it's hours here. to destroy a country. They only really need 24 hours. They can launch planes, they can work together, destroy a country, destroy anyone they want. They can create war in just 24 hours because then it's legal. Then it's afterwards, here. they can do whatever they want. They can um, go on to whatever. And America, now, they can go through the air and create as many enemies as they want. They can do nothing. But as soon as one day come, they can do they can create war and take over countries as they want. Like Russia, they've just taken out a country that is against the law. They're giving them one day to do it. I accept. So terrorists in America do whatever they want, like no matter what the law is, how is it going to be any different? Now you're giving them one day without repercussion, with no legal um, uh, side effects. They are literally going to do whatever they want because they can now, and not having to live with going to jail or mm, whatever. You see? And this is not this is not good for me. Now my last point, well not my last point, is the scars that this is gonna leave on people. I'm just gonna use one example just to personalize it. Is this man comes into a house that is locked but breaks down the door because it's legal. He walks into a room, sees a little girl by seven, he goes into a room, takes off her pants and starts shaping her. This is all legal. Now he doesn't kill her because he doesn't really care. He doesn't have to, but he can. But he doesn't kill her, he leaves her. For the next year. She's going to live with that thought, that image, that man, for the rest of the year. Then the next year, she's going to go out and commit a crime. So now what we are doing, we are creating criminals. We are creating people with psychological and emotional damage. And now, we're going to ask you the same question my previous speakers asked. How long before a day is not enough anymore? How long before we have to make it a week? Yeah. How long before we have to make it a month? How long before it's a year? How long before we have no laws whatsoever? And then, in what kind of a world are we living in? I'm asking you, how long and are we, are we literally taking the consequences of all of this into consideration before making such a drastic decision on our population and the world? And for that, me and my partner is so proud to have